Meet us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google+. Hey guys, this is Phil from TheCage.com, and this is Galaxy S6. It comes in two different versions, as far as you know, Galaxy S6 and the Galaxy S6 Edge. Uh, the both of the the two of the code names are zero and the zero flat. So this is exactly the variant of the Galaxy S6 Edge, not the other way around. All right, so it's the first Samsung one to have the front and back glass covered with the metal edge. It's actually a pretty fancy phone. Let's take a look at it from the first. Uh, view. It's got a receiver and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. It's a wide angle. It's a very, very good. It takes amazing selfies and um, it, it takes really, really bright pictures. And the 5.1 inches of a QHD AMOLED display follows by with the multitasking home and the back key. The home keys are slightly larger and it has a finger processor and it's not scroll but an area way of doing it. Let's just take it as an iPhone way of the fingerprint. On the right, you have the power key and the nano SIM card tray here. Uh, there's a nano SIM card tray, but you don't have the micro SD card slot, uh, so you can't expand your storage. Uh, that's one of the major uh, faults about the Galaxy S6. And there's an infrared port, the volume rocker, and the micro USB port, three point, the earphone jack, and the speaker hole. The, the bottom over here does look like the iPhone. Um, I don't know why they designed it like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that everything copied off an iPhone or anything, that iPhone started off everything, but um, you know, there, there's been a losses and everything, and um, it seems like it's some um, inevitable controversy that Samsung is bringing in. And there's a 60 megapixel camera with the, with the LED flash and the heart rate monitor and the, the carrier logo, Samsung logo, and the backside is actually really fancy. Uh, it's black when without any lighting, but when it's got the lighting, it turns into blue. And um, this is not exactly the first one to do this, but this is actually really fancy. It's one of the one of the first phones that from Samsung that I actually want to put it in direct sunlight just to see how it looks in that kind of lighting condition. Okay, comparing with the um, with the other phones. Uh, the Galaxy S6 actually looks a lot like the Galaxy S4, but um, there's a reason why I'm so happy with the Galaxy S6. That's because of the Galaxy S4 and the Galaxy S5 especially wasn't exactly the beautiful phone in the world. Um, comparing the Galaxy S4 with the Galaxy S6, you see the differences, why I'm excited. Or even with the Galaxy S5, that was a tremendous failure in the design. Um, you see how uh, much they got better, in, in terms of design at least. Okay, so let's turn it on. It's got a um, TouchWiz interface. Let's uh, get a closer look. It's got a TouchWiz interface and uh, Samsung has put on it a lot of effort to make it faster and more streamlined in a sense. So it is actually a lot snappier than ever before. But in terms of functionalities, they took off a lot of functions. So as you can see now, the, the American version has that, but the Korean version, and I don't know if there is any other version like that, doesn't have the alphabetical order. So there is to be a menu key down there. You can choose that to move icons around, create folders, and um, set it, most importantly, as the alphabetical order. But um, here on the Galaxy S6 with the new touch switch, there is no option like that. You can disable or uninstall your apps, but there is no way to hide your apps or to make it into alphabetical order. All I can do is to move around the icons. I have about a little bit more than 100 apps. I, I, can, I have to order them separately on my own. I don't think I'm gonna do that. So that's another thing. And another thing is once and every time that you touch the hard keys bottom here, the backlit lights up. The thing is the backlit lights up for two seconds and it's gone. And it's kind of annoying that it pops up and it gets, gets away. So there used to be an option there, there I can choose whether I'm gonna turn off the bank light completely or I'm gonna turn it on all the time as far as the screen's on. But that option is gone. So I guess this is the way that Samsung is gonna do the faster streamlined touch ways uh, in their own sense. I don't like this. Um, the Galaxy A7 and the A5, A3, they all had the new touch ways uh, and they were fast enough without taking much of the functions. And I don't know why they took this lot of functions, but they did. Aside from that, one important feature of the Galaxy S6 is camera. Uh, you can double tap twice on the home key and it takes you directly to the camera. And the front facing camera and the backside camera, both are amazing. They're simply put amazing. Let's take a look at some sample footage.
So that, eh? that, that was really good. Um, the Galaxy camera used to be, they were okay as an Android, but um, they, the shutter speed and the low lighting conditions were not exactly as good as the other phones, other competitors around. And now the Galaxy S6 takes that to the whole another level. I really like the results of the Galaxy S6 camera. Now another thing is sound. Um, the, the speaker is over there and it used to be on the back of the phone and um, it being on the bottom of the phone, it doesn't make any muffled sound anymore. It, it's now all clear and the speaker is actually quite good. It's now not as nearly as good as the iPhones, but it's actually quite good. It's very satisfactory. And the sound quality from your earphone, the earphone jack is moved to the bottom. That's a very welcome change. It's actually really good too. Um, it's not exactly completely suiting to my taste. I like the iPhone and the, and the Sony better, but um, sound quality overall is actually really good. Um, one of the things that um, the Galaxy S6 takes up front of the other phones is the processor itself. So, of course, it's a phone, and phone runs with the, the CPU, and uh, it's got a latest Exynos processor. It's called Exynos 7420, and it takes above every all the processors in the world. Um, most of the competitor has a Snapdragon 810, and the Snapdragon 810 is no competitor at all. It itself is a bad processor. I'm just gonna say it out loud. It's a bad processor. It gets heated a lot, and when it's heated, it throttles in a very excessive way, and it's really slow when it's throttled around. But Exynos 7420 does get heated uh, when you're using it with the hardcore processing, but it has that steady processor performances, so you'll be a lot happier with the Exynos 7420. And I was really happy with that 3GB of RAM too. Talking about the 3 gigabytes of RAM, aside from the RAM, the storage is one of the things that I really don't like. It comes in 32, 64, and 120 gigabytes. Where, uh, in some of the countries, some of the regions, 120 gigabytes are, are not available. And without the expansion slot, there's no way that you can store more than you want. So um, you can use the cloud, but um, cloud isn't exactly the perfect answer for the shortage of storages. What if you're out of data? What if you're out of? Uh, what if you're wondering about the security of this cloud services that you're using? So that's one of the, one one of the problems. And another is that there are pricing differences, like Apple does. I guess Apple uh, has taught that, or Samsung has learned that from Apple. Kudos to that. Not really. Um, those are the things that I are, that are really disappointed about Samsung. You know, one of the things were the replaceable battery and that expandable capacity. That was really the major big thing about the Samsung Galaxy. After all, you had the you had the advertisement about the wall hugger and everything. So now we're talking about the wall hugger. I guess it's time for us to talk about the battery. So the battery is another thing. It has 2550 milliamps of battery and for the screen on time I stream on 3G and I take photos time to time but most of all I just surf the web uh, mostly and for the screen on time it remains about the four and a half hours to three and a half hours so it's between three and a half and the four and a half and that's not a long of a battery life that's not long at all and um, with this fast charging capacity it kind of covers it off um, it's really fast it charges about 15 percent within 10 minutes in less than 10 minutes uh, i guess it's going to be easier for you to just watch it on video so let's take a look at it So that was faster than any other charging capacities and um, it also has a wireless charging. It charges both Qi and the PMA in the same time so you can choose uh, whatever you want. PMA chargers are really cheap these days um, so you can do that. But still, as the absolute battery life, it's not exactly a good battery. I'm going to say it out loud. 
So aside from that, this is actually a really, really well-built phone. It's an amazing looking phone and it's got quite a neat features as well. And performance wise, it's, it's, it's unbeatable by any of the current generation processors. Um, so the Galaxy S6 is a huge upgrade and it's a, it's a way that Samsung has set. Um, we're, we um, actually heard some news about their earning shock and they were shocked by their 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 performances and their they finally changed everything they used to do uh some of the things that they shouldn't have changed was um, this uh look alike speaker and the bottom part and also another thing is the keyboard so um they used to be the qwerty keyboard and the qwerty keyboard is all around the same but not really until they changed from the galaxy of kitkat to the lollipop they changed the shape to match the um, iPhone's colors and it's got more, um, it's got uh, more roundish in a sense. So I think it really looks like an iPhone's keyboard. Of course, it's nothing uh, identical or anything, but it's just um, unnecessary fuzz that Samsung has created by changing the color scheme and the design. So aside from these things, this is one of the best phones that Samsung has ever built. And with that display quality, it's totally amazing display quality and the totally amazing camera and not so impressive battery life and the storage limits i guess the pros and cons of this guy is very very solid one of the things that you might wonder is whether to get a galaxy s6 or the galaxy s6 edge both are real good phones real good phones but if um, you're not caring about the prices or that little bit of um difficulties in the gripping the phone uh, i i would definitely suggest to get the galaxy s6 edge it does have that futuristic look it looks 21st century while this galaxy s6 does look quite fancy but it's kind of still stuck in the 20th century so aside from that differences those are almost identical so um drop by the stores there are other colors as well you might like it um i like this blue blackish color really well but um, you might want to drop out a store this is one of the best phones that Samsung has ever built if you're considering about getting a new flagship phone this should definitely be on your list so that was galaxy s6 and we'll see you guys later